Hello, everybody. In this video, we will go ahead and discuss how to go ahead and solve uh, for conditional statements. Um, so ideally, this is like a piggyback off the logic uh, first section that we did. And um, it's more so understanding the images that we have in front of you because um, conditional statements can be um, created as we're watching the ads or whichever case. So looking at this first one, what can we infer about this picture? that if you play soccer or if you buy these shoes then you'll be what faster or maybe if you look at this one right here if you buy this cologne what should it go ahead and infer to you if you buy the cologne then you'll smell a little bit better or maybe if you buy these shoes what would happen maybe you'll get better maybe you'll be able to jump higher or maybe this one right here so if you end up buying Dove, what happens to your hair? It looks nice and creamy, right? So nice and creamy, and look, look, so you can go ahead and have nice hair. So all these are considered conditional statements in their own way, simply because it has you inferring a certain direction. So let's go over here and start on what we do. So conditional statements, what they are is that it's simply a statement where Simply a statement where it's an if and then form. If and then form. So from here. So that being said, if we're trying to do it in an if and then form, we have to understand that this if and then is the biggest key setup for whenever you're seeing these, uh, um, these statements. Now, there are two parts to them. Okay, and those two parts are considered the if and then the then. And so usually the if would represent the hypothesis. And the then would represent the conclusion. Okay, so, um, so from here, we have to go in and, and, and build whatever words we're given or whatever examples we're given to, into this form. Okay? So, that's what we got. Okay, so now, usually, they'll use something called P's and Q's. So, if you have something happens, then you'll get Q. Okay, so that'll be considered your hypothesis, and that's what we consider your conclusion. So that's one way to go ahead and um, seeing how it works hand in hand. And then this arrow right here says if and then it makes it makes the form work together. Okay. All right. So let's work on the first one. All right. So we're going to ask to rewrite it in conditional form. So wait, uh, there are 12 eggs if the carton is full. So we have to use if and then form. So in this one, if, if what? Here's my if, the carton is full. Then, let's see, then what? Then there are 12 eggs, okay? So one of the examples we have. Okay, so the next one. So rewrite the conditional statement in if and then form. So if so, any two adjacent angles share common uh, share a common side. Okay. So let's see. So if any two angles are adjacent. Let's see. So ideally what I did was I, I took this first part. Now I split up as adjacent angles because I want to clarify what my kind of uh, what the angles can be. Because you'll have different types of angles to work with. So if any two angles are adjacent, so then they share a common side. Okay. So um 
when you're working with conditions, the conditional statements and especially logic in this unit, um, you can rewrite this how you are. Uh, this happens to be the way that I've written it. So if you can go ahead and, and uh, form it in your own way, then that'd be great. Um, now, just a few examples there. Okay, so in, um, for these problems, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate how to uh, approach and shift around uh, the sentences so you can have the proper terms that are associated with them. So conditional, converse, inverse, contrapositive are the main ones that we have to work with. So if you noticed, um, they do have the P's, they do have the Q's in them, but then they do have a little tilde there. So this tilde, uh, what it is, uh, is just a way to negate. So it's like a negation, or another way to say not. So this is not uh, red, this is not um, big, this is not um, whatever it is. Um, so whatever, it takes the opposite of it. Now, um, as you're going through these, statement that can be written as an if and then form. So a conditional statement, if you live in San Antonio, then you live in Texas. So if you live in San Antonio, abbreviating, then you live in Texas, I'm abbreviating guys. Okay, so that's initially fine. That's, that's perfectly good the way it's written. Now Converse, we're just gonna flip it. If you live in what? If you live in Texas, then you live in, where guys? San Antonio, okay? So this, all we're doing is just flip-flopping them. So if you can understand converse condition, it'll be great. Now, the ones where it gets kind of tricky after a while is inverse and contrapositive. So the inverse, initially, you're taking the not, the not of the conditional. And if you look at this P, Q, uh, QP, and it's this QP right here, then it should look the same. So the contrapositive, you're just taking the not of the converse, okay? So let's go through these. So we're taking the knot of San Antonio and we're taking the knot of Texas. So if you do not live in San Antonio, then you do not live in Texas, okay? And then we'll talk about these in a little bit. Um, now the last ones, um, contrapositive. So the inverse is to take the knot of whatever the conditional was. The contrapositive here is going to go ahead and be the knot of the converse. So if you do not live in Texas, then you do not live in San Antonio, okay? Um, so we just take the knot of that, okay? So that's something where you have to be very, very careful on and what you're seeing, okay? So um, let's see. right here, right here, here's the knot, here's the knot, here's the knot, here's the knot. Okay, so this was conditional, converse, um, conditional, converse, inverse, contrapositive, the ones we have to go in and work with. Um, now, sometimes you can you might be asked for the truth value of these. And now the truth value is that if you live in San Antonio, you live in Texas, is that true or false? That's considered true. Okay, so we're seeing where we're going to see whether these are true or false or not. Now, if you live in Texas, then you live in, in San Antonio. Is that always true? That's false. Why? Because I live in Houston. So, okay, next one. If you do not live in San Antonio, then you do not live in Texas. That is false because where? Where can you live? You can also live in Dallas. Okay. All right, now contrapositive. If you do not live in ten, if you do not live in Texas, then you do not live in San Antonio. Is that true or false? That would be considered true. 
Okay, because if you don't live in Texas, obviously you can't live anywhere, any major cities in, you know, in the state. So, um, so there you go. So there's a few examples there you can work with. Okay, so I'm just gonna set up the conditional and then you can figure out the converse and inverse and contrapositive on your own from there based on the previous example that I just worked out. Okay, so my conditional, all quadrilaterals are squares. So it looks like it's gonna split right here. So if, let's see, if, so if it is a quadrilateral, then it is a square. Okay, so I'm gonna test the truth value on this one. So, if it's a quadrilateral, then it is a square, true or false? Mm, well, it can go and be a rhombus, in this case, right? So, um, so there you go. So a few examples on how to go and solve for um, conditional converse, uh, in, oh, conditional converse, inverse, quadrilateral. You have these to go ahead and figure it out on your own, okay?